Portsmouth, England, December 21st, 1872. The HMS Challenger sets out on a three-year scientific expedition to survey the Earth's oceans and search for new marine life. At the time of its departure, the mainstream scientific viewpoint is that life cannot exist more than 1,800 feet beneath the surface of the ocean. But in March of 1875, after more than two years at sea, the crew of the HMS Challenger makes a remarkable discovery. Using a deep sea dredge, they uncover an abundance of life at depths well beyond 1,800 feet. Every time they dredged the waters of the ocean, they kept bringing up weirder and weirder creatures at deeper and deeper levels. It be quickly became apparent that the oceans are teeming with life. Throughout time, we tend to sort of um, impose our own limitations and our own perspectives on sort of our view of the universe, right? And so our idea of the deep ocean was similar to that too. We thought that probably nothing else could live at great depths because we certainly couldn't survive. Um, our bodies couldn't take the pressure. Sort of biased, I think, our interpretation of life in the deep ocean. They found over 4,700 different types of new life it was a wealth of data so vast that it filled 50 volumes with 30,000 pages of information and was essentially a scientific revolution for its time. It was fascinating that it only was five scientists, uh, 220 plus uh, uh, crew, only five scientists. And only five scientists in about three years, they made oceanography. They made uh, modern science. And the reason for that why they did it is because they blindly go where no man goes before. And this is what scientists should do. In addition to finding new species of marine life, the Challenger crew also made the first discovery of what are called cosmic spherules, nickel iron micrometeorites from outer space. According to some scientists, these spherules could be capable of carrying extraterrestrial life. A lot of those rocks would have carried a microbial cargo. Cocooned inside of rocks, a microbe could be quite happy in the harsh conditions of space. In particular, it would be shielded from radiation by the depth of rock. It could probably stay in a dormant phase out in space for certainly thousands, if not millions of years. When scientists explored these nickel iron spherules in depth, they discovered that they contained iron that was extraterrestrial in origin. Is it possible that this extraterrestrial substances were brought here by alien beings and deposited in the oceans of Earth along with other forms of life? Is it possible that the Challenger discovered the conveyance of extraterrestrial life on the sea floor? Might the deepest parts of the ocean be as alien to us as the farthest reaches of outer space? We seem so fixated on finding life on other planets. If there's so much potential here on Earth, if there's anything that we've learned from history, it's that anything is possible. We can't discount the possibility that somewhere in the vast unexplored ocean depths, lies some highly intelligent and highly dangerous life form we haven't seen yet. Deep sea aliens, if you will. 75% of our planet is ocean. I think Jacques Cousteau said it should be planet of ocean, not planet of Earth. And we only know about 10% what actually lives in the ocean. Today, as we look deeper into our own solar system and beyond, we realize the importance of H2O and that water isn't only a life force for us, but possibly other organisms within the galaxy. And knowing that our oceans are as deep as they are, it's very possible that there's a whole other world of exploration waiting for us. We might even discover that there are other races living on the planet Earth, but at the deep parts of our oceans. Is it possible that extraterrestrials inhabit our waters all over the world? Perhaps when we finally make contact with alien beings, it will not be in the furthest reaches of space, but right here on Earth, lurking in the deep.